So the iPhone 14 is out, what are gonna be the best accessories to go with it? I'm Aaron The Ho, I've been reviewing iPhone accessories for almost 10 years now, and for the iPhone 14, you're gonna find out what I've tested to be the best MagSafe wallets, MagSafe battery banks, MagSafe chargers, phone grips, screen protectors, car mounts, headphones, lightning headphones, and finally cases. I've come up with a scoring system for each product category, so I'm gonna give you my top pick followed by a couple of runner-ups for each category. So subscribe if you wanna see the detailed reviews that show up in the following weeks. Let's get started. To figure out what the best MagSafe wallets are, I rank them against how well the wallet stays on, the number of cards you can fit into the wallet, and any sort of extras like stand features or phone grips. My top pick goes to the Pop Wallet Plus. I've been using this product for the last three years and it is just awesome. From my perspective, it's the perfect accessory. It functions as a phone grip, stand, and wallet. And the crazy thing is that each one of these functions works well. My own complaint is that the Pop Wallet Plus does come off a little easier than other PopSocket products. Runner up number one is gonna be the MagBack Wallet. If you're looking for a high capacity MagSafe wallet, it, look no further than the MagBack wallet. This thing can hold five to six cards fairly comfortably, and the cards are split between two sections, with each section having a cutout for quick access. The MagBack wallet includes a phone grip loop, and unlike other phone grip loops, it's soft and you can adjust the size of it. I will note that to get the full functionality of the MagBack wallet, you'll have to go with the MagBack case, which allows you to use a wallet as a stand for both portrait and landscape modes. Runner up number two is going to be the Moft Snap on Stand and Wallet. When it comes to the MagSafe wallets, out of the dozen or so that I I've used over the last year, anything under number three is basically hot garbage. And number three, which is this product, is borderline hot garbage. The Moth Snap-on Stand and Wallet is very similar to the Pop Wallet Plus in the sense that it tries to be a phone grip stand and wallet, but it doesn't really do any of those things particularly well. My biggest complaint is that the magnetic connection between the MagSafe back of the iPhone and the Moth Wallet is incredibly weak. It's strong enough that it doesn't fall off when you leave it alone, but the moment you put mild pressure on it, it slides. I'll be honest with you, if you're just looking for a straight up card carrying thing, I would just go with the Apple Leather Wallet. It is more expensive than any other wallet in our test group, but it does stay on very well and it does have Find My baked into the product. I've got two other wallet products that are worth looking at, uh, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna omit them. You can find them in the full video or check out the link to my site. On to MagSafe battery banks. And to figure out what the best one is, I rank them against data capacity, tested capacity, charge speed, size, and bonus features. Now my biggest draw to this Anchor 622 magnetic battery <laughs> Mago product is the fact that, that it offers more charging capacity than Apple's own MagSafe power bank with a state of capacity of about 5,000 milliamp hours. I tested around 3,000. It's very comparable in size to the Apple product and the cherry on top of it is that you can use it as a stand. This MagSafe battery bank is gonna be very handy for video calls or watching videos. Now the Mago 5K portable charger isn't actually that fast, which is surprising given that all the other things that we've tested from Anchor charges the iPhone incredibly fast. The strength of the connection between the battery pack and the iPhone 14 is gonna be average, so don't go around dropping it. The runner up belongs to the ESR Halock wireless power bank, and this is gonna be the best bang for your buck, because this is a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank that only costs $40. It's almost half the price of the Anchor product. The standout feature is how strong the magnetic connection is between the battery bank and the iPhone. When I use this battery pack, it doesn't feel like I need to baby the connection. I can just hold on to the battery pack and know that my iPhone's not gonna fall. The large capacity basically allows you the double life of an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now with a lot of these USB-C enabled uh, MagSafe battery packs, you can actually charge both a device and you can plug in a cable and charge something else if you really wanted to. You can charge two, two devices at once, which is pretty spectacular actually. Runner up number two is gonna be the Mophie Snap Plus Power Station Stand. If you're looking for a power bank for long video calls or video shots, you need to check out this product. It has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, has a built-in kickstand, but also allows you to mount tripods to it, which is very handy. All these features do come at a cost as this is a pretty pricey product and it's very bulky. The charger only provides 7.5 watts of wireless charging and was one of the slower ones in our test group, which isn't great, but the extra functionality kind of overshadows this fact. On to MagSafe chargers, which I ranked against charge speed speeds, how hot your iPhone gets, the size of the charger, and any sort of bonus features. The top pick goes to, well, the Apple MagSafe charger. When it comes to MagSafe wireless charging, there isn't anything that beats the Apple MagSafe charger. Why? Because this is the only product out of, an, out of all the products that I've tested that's actually made for MagSafe your iPhone knows the difference. At an actual 15 watt charge rate in our charger iPhone from dead for 30 minutes test, I got on average an extra 30% of charge when using the Apple MagSafe charger. The biggest downside of this product is the Apple tax. It's $40 for this thing, which is twice as much as the runner up, which is the Anchor Power Mate Magnetic Pad Lite, which only costs $16. It was the second fastest charger in a test group, but it also ran the hottest. The Power Mate Magnetic Charge Pad Lite is actually bulkier than the average MagSafe compatible charger, and the back is rounded, so your iPhone's actually gonna wobble a bit. But seriously, 
does that matter if all you're doing is looking for charge speed and price? Runner up number two goes to the YOLO Volt 15 Watt Magnetic Wireless Charging Pad with Kickstand. Jeez, that's a mouthful. Now I'm big fans of YOLO. In general, they produce high quality products. The YOLO Volt MagSafe charger is fairly fast despite claiming to be 15 watts. It only charges your iPhone at seven and a half because it's MagSafe compatible, not made for MagSafe. What sets this product apart from other chargers is the addition of a kickstand. So it props your iPhone up while it's charging. Sure, it's a small feature, but it does set it apart. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how many hours I spent charging my iPhone with a MagSafe charger. This is a tub, a tub of MagSafe chargers. So if you do appreciate what I do, get your stuff through my links. When it comes to phone grips, the best ones were the ones that could be used as a stand, were compatible with MagSafe, were comfortable to use, easy to use, and didn't fall apart after a few weeks of usage. Now, when it comes to phone grips, I've already talked about this product. My top pick is gonna be the Pop Willa Plus, mostly because in my scoring system, anything that becomes a phone grip in a wallet just scores really, really well. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this product, so I'm just gonna say that the next product that I'm gonna show is gonna be my top pick. They'll say that my top pick for just a pure grip is gonna be the Rhino Chill Grip Max and Grip Mini. And these are fairly new products and they are stellar. I initially thought that they didn't have mag safe versions, but I was wrong, they do. The Grip Max and Grip Mini are incredibly comfortable. The grip spreads the weight across multiple fingers so you don't end up with finger fatigue. When using these grips horizontally, the Grip Max is a bit more clumsy to use when compared to the Grip Mini. The standout feature of the Grip Max is the stand. It works in both landscape and portrait modes and is relatively stable. The cherry on top of this Grip Sunday is, well, the ability to custom print things on the back of each grip. The one downside that I've discovered is that the magnetic connection between the device and the grip needs to be a tad stronger. And I think Rhino Shield needs to add some sort of rubberized coating on the back to minimize the twisting of the grip on the back. Runner up number one is gonna be the Pop Grip. If you've been with this channel long enough, you know that I love this product. It's comfortable as a phone grip, strong enough that I'm not concerned that my iPhone's gonna fall off when I'm doing this, and you can customize everything on the grip, which is awesome. After the pop grip is the MagBat wallet. Already talked about it, so we're gonna move on to the next one on the list, which is the Love Handle Pro. And this isn't a MagSafe compatible phone grip, but if you don't care about MagSafe, this Love Handle Pro is incredibly comfortable to use. It can be used as a stand in both portrait and landscape modes, and if you've got finicky fingers, well, you can click away. For screen protectors, I rank each product against impact protection, the strength of the oleophobic coating, the quality of the adhesive, quality of installation tools, and the hardness of the screen protector. When it comes to screen protectors with the iPhone 13, I found myself gravitating to the Shellrest Sapphire screen protector. Why? Because it never scratches. And because it never scratches, you will never get a crack from a scratch which is how most screen protectors break anyways. This is one of the very few products for the iPhone that's actually rated to a hardness of 9H on the Mo scale, so go ahead, try to do your worst to it. The biggest downside of this product is that each screen protector basically has to be grown in a lab, so they're very expensive, but kind of worth it in my opinion. Runner up number one is the Zag XTR, and I was really surprised by this product because Zag's lineup is usually filled with marketing flip products, but this glass XTR was incredibly strong, had one of the better oleophobic coatings. All those features combined with Zag's pretty legendary warranty and the fact that it offers like blue light filtration makes the entire product very, very attractive. And if you're wondering what these things are, these are all the screen protectors that I've tested. I put them on pieces of uh, polycarbonate so that I can do the impact test. So nobody else does this. So <laughs> it's a little sad that this is what I've committed my life to. Runner up number two is gonna be the Flow Lab Nano Armor. The biggest thing for me is that, this is a brand new one, actually one that I haven't opened, is that the installation tools that Flow Lab includes in their products are top notch. And what I mean by top notch is that they've figured out everything that needs to be done in order to make sure that you get dust free installation. So they'll include a gigantic dust sticker. So that basically means you get to put a dust sticker on top of your entire iPhone instead of the tiny little ones where you have to kind of dab. And as you're dabbing, the dust is falling off the top of your hand and landing onto your screen. This big thing just like wipes it all out at once. Flab is also one of the very few companies that includes a dust repelling adhesive. I have not been able to capture video of it. I've seen it in action with my own installs and it is pretty cool. Flow Lab stuff is priced pretty competitively and the quality of the product is better than any of the Belkin stuff you would get from the Apple store, but at a fraction of the price. Now, if you're looking for non-glass alternatives, do check out the Rhino Shield 3D Impact and the Mouse Hybrid Glass. Both these products will offer an incredible amount of impact protection. When it comes to car mounts, I rank all the products based on charge speeds, the level of adjustability, the strength of the MagSafe connection, charge temperature, and bonus features. Now, I've been impressed with iAudi before, but not to this level. The iAudi VLOX is the best MagSafe car mount 
to my test group. The first thing I noticed about the Velux was the build quality of the product. It feels solid, has a nice matte finish to it, whereas most car mounts feel plastic and cheap. The Velux only produces seven and a half watts of wireless charging because it's MagSafe compatible, not made for MagSafe, but it was the fastest seven and a half watt charger in the test group. What was surprising was that it didn't run as hot as other charge pads, despite being the fastest. The Velux comes with a built-in power cable as well as a car adapter, so you don't have to really worry about anything else. What's the craziest thing about this product, Monty? It's only 55 bucks, which is $5 more than the average MagSafe car mount that I've tested. Runner-up number one belongs to the Anker 613 Maggo. And this was the most expensive MagSafe compatible car mount that I tested. This Anker 613 Maggo, Anker just has the most the most terrible product names. Anker 613 Magnetic Wireless Car Charger. Like there are other things like 622, the other things like 625. <laughs> this Anker product charges your iPhone a little slower than the IOTI Velox, but the magnetic connection between this car mount and the iPhone is a bit stronger. Now I found the adjustability of the Anchor MagSafe car mount to be a bit limited as it doesn't allow for windshield mounting, only dash. One of the design features that I really like is the integration of the power cable into the arm of the mount. It's a cleaner looking mount when compared to everything else. I believe Anchor can justify the price of this product because it does include a lot of extras such as a dash mounting plate, dual port car adapter, power cable, and cable clips. Next up is the Scosh Magic Mount Pro Charge 4. So if you're ever in a situation and you need to charge more than just a normal MagSafe iPhone, you know, like an Android device or an older iPhone, then you should definitely get the Scosh Magic Mount Pro Charge 4. Why? Because it's a MagSafe charger, but it also has pieces to help you charge non-MagSafe iPhones or Android devices. This flexibility is what makes this product crack the top three in our list. The cherry on top of this car charger Sunday is all the extras, such as a dual port car adapter, vent and dash mounts, cable clips, and a base mounting plate. The downside is that the Pro Charge 4 is a bit slower in terms of charge speeds and the magnetic connection for the MagSafe portion is only average. I will admit that this is the Pro Charge 4. There is a Pro Charge 5. I can't find these in Canada. I actually had to walk to a store and buy it. I can't buy them online, which is brutal. Especially considering Scotch is like, we're the number one car mount or mount thing in Canada and the US. I'm from Canada and I can't buy it easily. Ha! When it comes to Bluetooth headphones, I've been getting all of Apple's headphones, including the Beat lineups for the last few years. Now for these headphones, I rank them against the price, usability, sound quality, and sound isolation. Now my AirPod Pro 2s haven't shown up yet, but based on what I've seen, on paper, I don't think it's gonna change any of my recommendations. My topic, if you're not blindly just gonna go get your AirPod Pro 2s, is to get the Beats Fit Pro. The Beat Fit Pros, these are my daily headphones. I will not use anything else. Why? Because I can walk Monty, work at my workstation, and go work out without having to change headphones. The Beats Fit Pro are essentially a pair of Apple AirPod Pro 1s wrapped in a Beats charging case. It has all the features of the Pro AirPods, including the new customized spatial audio scanning feature introduced in iOS 16. The standout feature for me are the wings on the earbuds. The wings are like perfect. They sit deep enough in my ear that when I'm doing my CrossFit style workouts, I'm doing a lot of jumping and hopping, they don't fall out, but they're not big enough that they annoy me all day. They just like sit perfectly perched in whatever part of my ear. I honestly can't think of any reason why anybody would choose any other Apple headphones over these Beat Fit Pros. Now with that being said, when Apple updated their uh, AirPods, the normal ones to uh, third generation, I was actually very, very surprised because these headphones, I like them better than the AirPod Pros. The new AirPods fit deeper in the ear, improving the sound isolation without having the plugged ear feeling with the in-ear design of the AirPod Pros. And because of the fit, these newer AirPods sound better than the old ones. Now, when it comes to working out, when I do a lot of jumping or a lot of running, these things, they're like borderline unusable to me because you're constantly like, you run for 400 meters and you're like, yeah, they're still there. Yep. Runner up number three are the Beats Studio Buds. And honestly, I'm starting to think that Beats is starting to become the budget lineup of Apple's headphone lineup. I only say this because the Beats Studio Buds seem to be an extremely watered down version of the AirPod Pros. But if you're looking for something with noise cancellation and you're on a budget, this is gonna be your best bet. The biggest difference with the Beats Studio Buds is a lack of any W1 or H1 chip. It has Beats own version of it and seems to mimic most of the usability features of Apple's H1 chip, like having a notification show up at the bottom of the screen when you connect it to your device. And because you can't sync it to, and because it's missing one of Apple's special chips, you just can't sync it to iCloud. Audio sharing is non-existent and device switching is 
non-existent as well. If you are planning on getting a uh, pair of headphones because of my review, make sure you use my links to support, you know, unbiased content and reviews. Seriously, when is Apple gonna kill the lightning port? For those looking for a pair of lightning headphones, I have tested a handful, and based on my rankings on sound quality, mic quality, fit, and price, the top pick is gonna be the Skull Candy set. And if you like listening to your music with a bit more bass, well, get the set of headphones. The sound isn't bad and the mic is decent. It performs incredibly well if you use the Skull Sandy Scent mic as a TikTok mic or a pseudo mic. The runner up for lightning headphones is gonna be the Apple EarPods. They're just the best all around pair of headphones. They don't sound as good as any of the headphones in this section, but the mic is by far the best. If you're looking for a pair of headphones for video calls or just to record TikTok videos, basically if you're tired of losing earbuds or tired of dealing with batteries with wireless headphones, just get a pair of Apple AirPods. They're actually very, very cheap when compared to all the other headphones that I've reviewed for this section. Runner-up is gonna be the Ugreen In-Ear Lightning headphones, and these are some of the best sounding buds I've used to date for anything. The sound was full and balanced and honestly sounded better than some of Apple's more expensive headphones. My biggest issue is that these are incredibly small and a bit annoying to put into your ear. The last thing I'll say is that this mic on this product is Terrible. On to cases, and with cases, I rate them against size, price, protection level, extras, and iPhone access. And given the number of different cases, I'm gonna give my top picks for normal cases, thin cases, and round it all off with a budget case. Overall, the case that always hits the top of my list are the mouse cases. If you want a clear case, my top pick is gonna be a case to fire ultra impact. Both these cases utilize three different types of materials for protection, TPU, TPE, as well as polycarbonate, which means you can easily drop your iPhone as much as you want from daily usage heights and not have to worry about your iPhone breaking. Both these products come with a lot of usability features on top of the protection that it offers and they are well built. Honestly, with these two products, all you have to worry about is the case that you have to buy for the next iPhone that you buy. These things will last you however long you keep your iPhone. Now, if those cases are a little too bulky, when it comes to thinner cases, my recommendation would to either go with a Cotabi sheath or a Pataka Fusion weaving. The Cotabi sheath has a pretty unbeatable finish that sits really well in your hand, and despite being a thin case, it doesn't have very loose edges. This thin case is also MagSafe compatible, so you had to do everything you need to do with your MagSafe accessories that you're gonna get. When it comes to something that's ultra thin, it is hard to beat the Pataka Fusion weaving case. Why? Because carbon fiber cases in general are very bleh. They're very sterile. It's like, yay, I've got a hatching pattern on this thing. But with the fusion weaving, Patek has managed to weave a different color of carbon fiber into the case and it just makes everything pop. If you're careful with your device, the Pataka fusion weaving is definitely worth getting. But if you're on a budget, honestly, get something from Phone Rebel. The latest iteration doesn't have the same protective uh, properties as a mouse or case to fight, but they do include a couple of Flow Lab screen protectors, so it's a very cost effective product. You get a decent, well built case, and you get a bunch of really good screen protectors at a decent price. So that's all I got for this video. If you're planning on getting your accessories, make sure you use my links. Again, unsponsored content. First time watching my videos, hit subscribe. Did I miss anything else, Monty? What is that in your mouth?